Hey, hey, thanks for joining us. John in the desert here. Got Jamie over here. And we're sitting here watching a couple of really great or not so great kinetic energy rope recover videos here on the old YouTube. And um, check this one out here. Um, Oh, crap. Um, a lot of force, a lot of energy being expelled here. Kinetic energy ropes, you're familiar with them, you're seeing them. They are the next best thing since sliced bread. Wouldn't you agree? I would, they're they're fantastic for what they do. Yeah, but they can also be dangerous. Check this one out right here. Oh, it's not gonna be good. Yeah. Oh, dang, holy cow. Um, so there's a right way and there's definitely a wrong way to use kinetic energy ropes. Um, they're primarily made out of a nylon type of composite. They're designed to stretch, unlike your winch line, which is made out of uh, either Dyneema. Got Vectran. Vectran, sure. Um, they have very, very little stretch to them whatsoever. Kinetic energy ropes, they're designed to have some give to them. So, oh, oh, check this out. Oh, so fast. Oh, oh. dang. Um, Just like that. Yeah, they can do a lot of damage, you can do a lot of harm, but not really understanding how the kinetic energy ropes are designed to be used. So stick with us. We're gonna walk through a little bit of the math behind doing proper recoveries using the kinetic energy ropes. So how exactly do you wanna go about testing all this good stuff? Well, you know, I've got that load cell mm -hmm. and a load cell is a device that you can pull on and it's gonna tell you exactly how much force is being applied. Kind of like a scale, but only linear. Perfect. Um, we'll take that, we'll tie it onto a big immovable object, like we'll say a, a, an army tank stuck in the mud. I don't think we have access to an army tank, but what about something maybe like a tree, just big immovable tree? Yeah, how do it work? So yeah, we'll take the load cell, we'll throw a tree saver strap on that tree, we'll hook the load cell onto it and we'll, we'll pull it at a variety of different speeds. We'll say we start off with a mile an hour, two mile an hour, three mile an hour, Let's go all the way up to five because most reputable manufacturers say that kinetic energy ropes should be used at speeds typically under five miles an hour for safety. Right, absolutely. How, how do you want to um, you know, measure our speed? Because just reading that dial can be tricky. Yeah, no, I've got a GPS speedometer that we could use, but... Okay. Um, uh, we're not going very fast. It's probably not going to be too accurate. But you know, on the Gladiator, we've got that speed select we could use to, you know, break it down into very small increments. And I think it actually works in one kilometer per hour increment. So rather than miles per hour, we could use one kilometer per hour, two kilometer, three, just to keep it nice and quantifiable. Perfect. Okay, so let's go do a couple of different pulls all the way up to the equivalent of five miles an hour, which would be what, like, uh, you know, something in kilometers. And uh, we'll log our data and see where we're at. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Okay, just to recap, what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab one of our trees we have right here in the yard, good substantial tree. We will go ahead and throw a um, tree saver strap around it. Onto that, we will hook our load cell onto the load cell, we will have it onto the back of the vehicle. And uh, we'll use a little bit of slack in it before that vehicle accelerates away. Now, using the select speed on the Jeep itself, it's gonna give us a range from one through eight kilometers per hour. And just for reference, eight kilometers are approximately five miles per hour. And so we're gonna take it through the range, one, two, three, all the way up through eight. We're gonna create a matrix and see exactly how the force exponentially increases with the speed of the vehicle. As a safety measure, we've also taken a second little lanyard and also run it around the tree, just in case we had a failure, we don't have this big hunk of metal coming flying through our back window. Safety first, boys and girls. So let's get this rigged up and let's make it happen. All right, so we've got it set up here. Let me show you what we've got going on. Here's our load cell. We're gonna have it set into a mode that it, it records the maximum value that it sees. A um, Couple of soft shackles on either end onto our tree saver strap. Now, everything in this system from A to Z has a rating on it. If you're doing a kinetic energy uh, pull on a vehicle, always know what all of those ratings are and that's including the bumper now most bumpers don't have a rating especially if it's an aftermarket bumper so always be very very cautious of what both ends of your system are going on to and as an additional safety measure in this case i've added a second lanyard 
onto it, also around the tree. If something here were to fail and break, and this is gonna come careening towards a vehicle causing substantial damage and or injury, leading all the way up to death. So we're gonna be very, very cautious of how we do this. We've got it rigged up. Let's start getting ourselves some data. All right, give me a thumbs up out the window there. All right, looks like we we're ready to go. Um, we've got our load cell set up. We've got the video camera on the load cell and he's going to take it at one kilometer per hour. Go ahead and do it. Let's give it a pull. So this is the vehicle itself doing all of the both braking and acceleration. One kilometer per hour, that's 0.6 miles an hour. It's pretty darn slow. And it's going to still put a sizable load pull on here. Should be coming to it. And there it is. Let's go take a look, see what we got. At that small pole, you can still see 1,248 pounds worth of pole at 0.6 miles an hour. Well, one kilometer per hour sure was pretty anticlimactic, but you could see just how much force was still being applied, somewhere around 1,200 pounds worth of force. So now we're gonna try two kilometers per hour, see uh, just how much force we generate. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. Okay, from 1200, kicked it up to 1680. That's 16. So we just finished that pull at seven kilometers per hour where we were already you know, reaching forces of about 7,500 pounds. That's a whole lot of pull to get something unstuck. Next up is gonna be eight kilometers per hour or five miles per hour. That's that point of most leading manufacturers are recommending don't exceed five miles per hour. So that is going to be this final test. We're gonna see just how much force that puts on the system. All right, sounds good. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, here we go. Eight kilometers per hour. All right, so now to verify our data, we're going to go ahead and we're going to clear out everything. And uh, we're going to go ahead and redo the entire matrix, double check our numbers. I'm good when you're good. So at a whopping one kilometer, which is 0.6 miles an hour, less than one mile an hour, we're gonna see what we end up getting here. All right, and what's our last data point? We've got 87.26. 87.26. Well, that certainly does fall right in line with everything else we're seeing here. So it's a pretty linear equation that we're coming up with. We can see for every kilometer of additional oomph we took into the system, we raise almost across the board by somewhere between 1,100, 1,000 and 1,100 uh, pounds of force for every kilometer. That's 0.6 miles per hour. So by the time we were just barely moving at five miles an hour, we're pulling with almost 9,000 pounds of force. You might ask, why is this important? Let's show you. I'm pretty impressed with this data. It was pretty linear. It um, really is. It's, even at five miles an hour, what are we getting up there? Gosh, well over 9,000 pounds of pulling force. And uh, we said five miles an hour was important. And why is that? Well, let's think about what we have this system tied to. We use both saw shackles and a screw pin bow shackle. Let's take a look at this. Working load limit here, it says four and three quarters tons. What's four tons? Four tons, that's 8,000 pounds. And add another 1,500? 9,500 pounds. So this is rated at 9,500 pounds. Let's take a look at that one. This one, this is 47,000 pounds. That's a whole lot of difference. But 
Is that one mean that one's stronger? I don't know. That one has WLL on it, right? Working load limit. And this one's using? Um, this one is using MTS. Minimum tensile strength, yeah. right. So the difference between working load limit and minimal tensile strength, these come from the overhead crane industry where they wanted a safety factor. They wanted an, a, a certain amount that they can go over by. These are usually a five to one safety margin. This on the other hand, it's is, got it's got that minimal tinsel strength. That so that's that, that's right there at the top of uh, what it can take before it's actually going to break. And so this one at 9,500 pounds with a five to one. What's five times 9,500? That's 47,500 pounds. That's pretty much apples to apples. So these are pretty comparable as far as their strength go. So we've got something or a couple of some things that are good for about 9,500 pounds which we are achieving at five miles an hour. So we're watching some of the YouTube videos where people are going 10, 15, 20 miles an hour when that kinetic energy is coming to a, a yank at the end. And if we just continued with our very linear line here, we can see at 10 miles an hour, we're gonna be at 18,000 pounds, which is far above and beyond what these are calling for. We go 15, now we're even further out that scale, further into the danger zone. And some of the videos we were watching this morning, they were way beyond that, wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was just, it was just dangerous, dangerous stuff. So what we recommend is if you're using a kinetic energy rope, just try giving a dynamic pull first, just a pull using the traction of the vehicle and see if you can pull that vehicle vehicle free. Now, the amount of pull you're going to be get is usually directly proportional to the type of terrain that you're on. If you're on something like slick rock, magnificent traction, you're going to have a stronger pull than if you're in a sand or sand dune situation. So that is a variable that we can't control. But what we can control is how we apply that force. And so by trying first a traction extraction, and then maybe try a one or two miles an hour, and then kick it up a little bit, and then a little bit more. But to get back from the first pull you do at 15 or 20 miles an hour, so you're just, much force. You're, you're, yeah, you're in the danger zone for sure. So think about that. Um, anyway, I'm John in the desert. This is Jamie. Um, I run a off-road tour company here and an off-road training program here in Moab, Utah. It's called Coyote Adventure. And? And I do Coyote all-wheel drive. So kind of focusing more on the uh, people driving all-wheel drive vehicles that are trying to get out into the back country and explore. And uh, I want to teach them what their vehicles are truly capable of doing. So before you spend 50, 60, 70, $80,000 on your off-road rig, be willing to spend a couple of dollars getting trained on the exact ways to use it and how to do things safely. John in the desert saying, hey, I'd like to hang out. But we got to go. We got to go. How's that? Smooth like butter? <laughs>